started the same way it always starts. I was alone. On the internet. And I got a text from Gregory. He said he found our next project. I knew there was only one place that this could lead. The same place it always leads. Down the rabbit hole. We are bookbinders now. Hey you guys, this is Brigham. If you were to go back and watch all the videos that we've uploaded, you would probably wonder what kind of channel we are. Are we a laser shop, woodwork, leather? The truth is we can't decide. We like all those things. And our most recent endeavor is this, bookbinding. Gregory and I got to work watching videos, reading blogs and forums, hours and hours of information consumed until we felt like we absorbed enough to at least start. We started by making this super simplified, super tiny book and posted it online. A lot of people liked it, including my brother-in-law who reached out to me with a request. He's super big into Warhammer 40k and wanted a smaller solution for carrying the core rules around. Naturally, I jumped at the opportunity to try out the bookbinding things that I had just been learning. First, I printed off the free PDF they have online into four page signature groups. A signature is just a bundle of pages. For this book, I only needed four. I then trimmed the edges of each and folded them in half. Then I clamped it between two hardboards I had to get them as flat as I could. This was my first real attempt at this, so a recurring theme you'll see is me using random things to achieve my goals as I didn't have any of the tools that bookbinders would normally use. A second note here is that I get impatient when I do projects. I get deep into a project and hate losing momentum. So if I come across an issue where I need a certain tool I don't have or a certain material, I'll usually try to just improvise. I know, not a great thing, and a lot of times it makes the job more difficult than it would have been if I just waited until I got the thing I needed, and it doesn't always work out. But in this instance, it did. I used this green paper for the end papers of the book. They're just some scrap paper that my wife already had. I cut them just a bit wider than the signature so that I could fold about a quarter inch from the edge. This will allow me to have that much to glue to the first signature of the book. And I did the same for the last signature of the book. There are so many ways to add these end papers. I don't know why I chose this way. It just seemed straightforward, I guess. You add the end papers to your text block so that you have something to glue to your covers. These end papers will be part of what holds your text block to your cover.
yes, I did just use the clamp's weight to smash the signatures instead of clamping them. It's fine. I used an awl to poke holes in the signatures for sewing. You can certainly do this the way I'm doing it here, but I have since discovered that a lot of bookbinders use a book cradle. It looks something like this. This is actually one that we made on the laser. It's in our Etsy store if you want one. I used some waxed thread I already had from leather stitching. It seemed to work pretty good, although I'm sure it's more typical to use thinner thread. This stuff I was using was one millimeter, probably not what a real bookbinder would use, but again, I didn't want to lose momentum, and it worked fine. Once I had the text block sewn together, I put some glue on the spine and let it dry. And once it had dried, I put another coat of glue to prepare for the book cloth. A lot of people use fancy kind, but by now you should probably know that I didn't have any and just used some canvas type fabric my wife had. It's thicker than what is typically used, I think, so I made sure I saturated it pretty well with glue. The next challenge was to cut the edges of the text block to be perfectly straight. Some bookbinders use big guillotine cutters and others use a book plow. At the time, I did not have either of those things, but I did have a table saw for cutting wood. Go with me on this one for just a sec. Paper is basically wood, right? R right? See, see what I'm saying? <laughs> if, if you thought this would be a terrible idea, then you'd be right. Um, the good news is that all the pages were exactly the same length. The bad news is that they were all jagged. So there you have it. Uh, it's, it's concluded. Paper is not wood. The next attempt was to get these two scrap pieces of 2x4. The idea was to kind of make my own book plow. 
I clamped the text block between the two 2x4s with just a little of the text block above the top of the 2x4s. I then sharpened my chisel and proceeded to slice away at the text block. By placing the flat part of my chisel on the flat top of the 2x4, I could slice every page of the text block perfectly straight. Well, at least as straight as the top of the 2x4. But this ended up working really well, and I'd suggest using this method if you want a very budget book plow. This chisel I'm using is from Harbor Freight. It came in a set of like six, and it's like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. With that done, it was time for the cover. The typical material for book covers is chipboard. It's like this dense cardboard type material. If you guessed that I didn't have any, then guess what, you, you win. <laughs> but I did have this hardboard stuff from some laser projects we did. It's thicker than most chipboard, but I was pretty sure that it would work. So I just cut it um, a little bit larger than the text block and taped it to where I wanted it to go. And then I cut out some leather, roughly an inch to a half inch bigger than the total size of the cover. Now for the leather, you have to skive the edges, which basically just means you shave the leather thinner. This was for sure the most frustrating part of the whole project up to this point. Because guess what I didn't have? That's right, a skiving knife. But the chisel worked so well on the paper, I figured that I'd give it a try. It turned out real, real bad. <laughs> I, I just couldn't get the chisel sharp enough to cut the leather well. I still used it though and kind of crumbled the flesh side of the leather off until it was at least decently thin. Once I glued the hardboard to the leather, I then cut the corners at 45 degrees. This will allow me to form the inside corners. It was pretty tough to get the sides of the leather to stick. I think it was a combination of the Elmer's glue having a longer working time and the leather not being sufficiently skived, so it was a bit thick. So I figured I would get it at least in place enough, then clamp the cover around the text block for it to dry. And this is when my camera fell and I didn't notice. If you're wondering, I'm getting the text block and cover situated with parchment paper. Ah, there we go. I noticed. <laughs> this, this actually ended up working pretty well. Oh, I forgot to mention the glue. I didn't have any PVA glue, which is most commonly used in bookbinding, so I used this clear Elmer's glue. After watching a ton of videos, it seemed that people just kind of use whatever they want. Some people say Elmer's glue is no good for long term. Others say it's their favorite. I used it because I already had it. I've since tried out a couple different kinds of glue, and I think I do like PVA glue better than Elmer's, but if Elmer's glue is what you have, it's fine. Another thing I didn't have was these headbands. Most headbands these days are purely ornamental. They're the little things that sit on the top and bottom of the spine. But I made these with black ribbon and a piece of cord.
You might could tell that the Elmer's glue wasn't drying very fast, so I helped it along with some super glue. This may not be the best way to hold the headbands on while they dry, but it's what I came up with at the moment. The next thing was gluing it to the cover. The final stretch was adding the foil. Traditionally, bookbinders use hot tools to press foil into leather books. I'm sure it comes as no surprise that I do not have any hot tools, <laughs> but I do have a vinyl cutter and a Hobby Lobby nearby. So this is just the Hobby Lobby brand of foil heat transfer vinyl. I've done a lot of heat transfer vinyl, so naturally I did not read the directions. Turns out not all heat transfer vinyl is created equal. You might be able to tell I was kind of struggling with it, getting it to stick to the book properly. So I read the instructions and this kind of HTV says to use a pressing cloth. I had no idea what that was, so I just grabbed a towel from the drawer. I did my best, but I, I think the damage was already done from my previous efforts. I eventually got it all to stick with plenty of imperfections in the foil. I determined it would probably be best to make the imperfections look intentional. And ultimately, it turned out far better than I was expecting.
This is the beginning of a huge adventure in bookbinding. I can feel it. If you want to check out another book we did, on which we also had issues with the foil, it's in the corner link. If you made it this far, I very much commend you. If you liked the video, then go ahead and leave that thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, you are a trooper, and I appreciate you sticking around anyway. We'll see you next time.